on what they're doing and their approaches. We're going to have uh, Ken Landon, uh, who, of course, has a lot of renown with his collection, and of course, the Texas Dawn this morning. That Senator Drew Darby, or Representative Darby, read into uh, our minutes. And we have Brandon McLean from Florida Aquatics. Uh, Brandon's dad, Brad, has been a longtime supporter of the society, and we're glad that Brandon's making us his next home. <laughs> and uh, we're very pleased to have him. And there's an incredible amount of exciting material coming out of Florida Aquatics. And Ken has, for many, many years, developed some incredible water lilies. The good news is you're going to see a lot of these new creations this evening and also tomorrow when we're at the Civic League Park. So without further ado, I'm going to turn it over to these gentlemen to so stay on schedule. Come on up, please. First of all, we're very pleased to have everyone here at the uh, IWC. Uh, this started a long time ago, but uh, I've been here for 20 years doing this. And uh, some of the hybrids that we produced uh, have come to be pretty noteworthy. We certainly, I certainly appreciate the lilies that we uh, have from Brandon and others that are some of the finest plants to ever grace this planet. And uh, we certainly intend to keep them around. Uh, but uh, as, a, as a starting note, the concho, <laughs> there are three rivers that, that feed into the lakes here. The middle concho, the south concho, and the uh, north concho. And they're all conchos. So that's the primary river that comes through the city that you see out the window. And so everybody thinks about the concho. And years ago in this, in, oh, 18, well, it was no, 16, about 1640s, we had records of Nymphia elegans growing on the concho, which is the only tropical native Texas state lily. Uh, uh, but the red-eared slider took care of that, which is a turtle. And uh, after a while, the catfish did not eat the turtle, and the turtle ate the lily. So that's what, uh, that's what happened. But in any case, uh, my work with hybridization has been quite uh, mixed in the sense that I've uh, had to develop ways to not or to create flowers that I did not have pollen for the gene pool. Now you know that on the that I'm on the committee about the species lilies. We have about 90% of the species in our inventory, or the IWPR does, International Water Lily Preservation Repository, which I'm the president of. We have these lilies and we use them to propagate and to go ahead and regenerate uh, some of the things that we uh, that we have uh, uh, as far as the species are concerned. We need the species lilies to make the hybrids. You can make hybrids, but finally the genetics gets into a situation to where you may not get what you want. Our plants will shatter as they, as they age or become kind of crippled looking. So genetics is very important. Species material is extremely important. Uh, uh, Dr. Pring, and I've heard of him, uh, used birdie eye to get some of his yellows. And birdie eye is in Zimbabwe. And I want to go get birdie eye. And I don't care about the hippos or the saltwater crocs, but the shot that they're going to try to shoot me with, the local people, is not necessarily recommended. So I don't think that I'll be going right away. Last year we had some sites where this uh, gorgeous yellow water lily existed, but the elephants got to them and took great numbers of them away. So we have about eight to 10 species of lilies that we have known for years that are now, as far as we know, extinct, which is negative. So we're trying to preserve a lot of this material. I use a lot of my species lilies for hybridization work. The blue cloud, the big blue thing that you haven't seen that you'll see down at the pool was back crossed and back crossed and re-back crossed into uh, Gigantia hook, hooker and, and to, until we had a flower that was perfect. And I have that in any, any number of other colors. I have a pink one, I also have one that's in the, on the yellow shades. I don't know of any Gigantias that are yellow, but we're working on trying to, they want me to show it, but it's not yellow enough, so I'm working on that. 
but primarily as far as hybridization, I do the regular method where you pick the stamens out of the female flower prior to opening and, and uh, anthesis, and, and then uh, when the uh, stomatic fluid comes up, then I'll go ahead and fertilize it with the pollen that I've already taken before. I pull my flowers that I'm going to use as a parent, uh, the male parent, a day before they open and I take them to an enclosure to where there can't be any insects or anything like unto that can get to them. And then when they do open, I go ahead and let them open. And there's enough sugars in the, in the sepals, in the sepals, that they will open the regular three-day cycle. Uh, so I keep them, and then on the second day of the dehiscence of the pollen, uh, I store the pollen or go ahead and use it, usually within 24 to 48 hours. Now, someone made a comment years ago that, well, you know, Ken, you've got these, uh, you know, you've read about some of my exploits to the jungles and weird things to try to do to get lilies, kind of the Indiana Jones style, uh, which is things that I do to go get them. And, and Barry Elquist is here. He knows what that's like. Uh, sometimes you can get in pretty precarious situations. But uh, anyway, uh, I brought back Flavovirans several years ago, or Gracilis, as it really should be called, uh, from Mexico. They said that I couldn't get it, so I said, well, I'll tell you that I can. It wasn't anymore in the country. And I used, uh, that was some of the earliest lilies that were ever produced were the star lilies. And they were crossed mostly with Zanzibarensis, which we have, and which you will see tomorrow if you haven't already been down there. We have all of the Zanzibars as they exist in Zanzibar from what's left. They're very rare probably about 80 to 90 percent of the Brachycerus or tropical day bloomers that are not Australian or Nekfa, those uh, that has the blood of the Zanzibars in them. Either by crossing, back crossing, recrossing or whatever was done, there's Zanzibarensis genetics in those flowers. So it's a very important species to be able to keep and hold on to. And I'm really uh, careful that we keep that one straight from root division, even though the seeds come true to type. I don't want any kind of a mixture. So in the inventory, we have root division tubers that are genuine. So I use these in some of my hybridization, uh, but a comment was made years ago, well, Ken, you don't have a yellow one, so we can do. Well, the gene pool's not here. Sulfuria is not here. We don't have sulfuria as far as the species concerned. But we do have some that set pollen, that will set pollen. Uh, some of the darkest colors like uh, St. Louis gold, for example, will set pollen, but it does not like to go ahead and form a berry on the female plant. Very hard to get this to happen. So what we did is, or what I did is, worked with it for seven years and was not able to get anything out of it. So I made some experimentation, did some things, and watching the pollen grains sprout under the microscope and what we needed to do. And uh, I figured out the hydroxyl mix, the sugars, the esters, whatever it takes to make that flower what it is. And finally, I crossed it by crossing a flavor of iron pollen into the, the St. Louis gold by using the stomatic fluid of the uh, uh, star lily, gracilis. And the pollen sprouted, and I got a seed pod about the size of 50 cent piece with about 150, 200 seed. I planted them off, and about 20% of those died. 75 lived, and the darkest color came out to be what's now known as Nymphia, Nymphia, Nymphia. Uh, I need a Ruth, which is named for my mother. It's the only yellow star lily in the world. But it can be done, but if I had birdie eye, like Dr. Prem did, which is the species that we're losing, and we represent the IWGS, the species, the genus. Very important for us to keep this material. So that's what I try to emphasize, is keeping that material. But I make the hybrids, that's how I made that hybrid work, that lily worker, that cross. And uh, then as far as blue cloud, it's just a back cross, back, forth, back and forth, back and forth. The many other hybrids that I've made from the star lilies are in every color of the rainbow now. There isn't any color that I don't have. I even have bicolors that are, uh, you know, white at the bottom and pink on the tips, and vice versa, as well as sunset shades 
like this great tropic sunset that they've got in a flower that stands this high. And the star ladies to me are simple, but a group of them together are, it's outrageously wonderful.